What if your morning coffee came with a side of controversy? In Seattle, a unique trend has baristas serving up more than just lattes. Welcome to the world of Sexpresso, where bikini-clad baristas are stirring up debates on empowerment, objectification, and the price of a cup of joe. This eye-catching concept first appeared in the early 2000s, with Cowgirls Espresso leading the charge in 2003. Since then, the trend has exploded, with over 100 stands now dotting the greater Seattle area. It's a testament to the fierce competition in the local coffee scene, where baristas are pushing boundaries to stand out. But beneath the surface of this seemingly simple business model lies a complex web of issues. Is this empowering work for women, or just another form of objectification? Are these stands offering genuine economic opportunities, or exploiting vulnerable workers? As we explore this controversial industry, we'll uncover the surprising truths that lie beneath the surface of Seattle's espresso scene. You've seen the headlines, but have you ever wondered what drives someone to become a bikini barista? The truth is more complex than you might think, blending empowerment, economics, and an unexpected sense of community. For many women in Seattle, stepping behind the counter of a bikini barista stand isn't just about serving coffee, it's about opportunity. In a city known for its competitive coffee scene, these unique establishments offer a surprising edge. As one barista candidly shared, to get a job at one of these stands was 10 times easier for me than to get a job at a regular coffee stand because of how I look. But the allure goes beyond just landing the job. The financial potential is a significant draw, with baristas often earning substantial tips that far outweigh what they'd make at a traditional cafe. This economic incentive is a powerful motivator, especially for young women looking to support themselves or fund their education. However, the job comes with its own set of challenges that aren't always visible from the drive through window. Sexual harassment is an unfortunate reality that many baristas face daily. One worker revealed, some guys will seriously like say the nastiest things to you. This darker side of the job extends beyond verbal harassment. Some baristas report shocking incidents of indecent exposure, with one newcomer stating, I only started here three weeks ago, and I've dealt with that like multiple times already. Despite these obstacles, many bikini baristas find empowerment in their work. They emphasize that their role goes far beyond their appearance, countering stereotypes with their expertise in customer service and coffee preparation. At stands like Cowgirls Espresso, Baristas take pride in their skills and the relationships they build with regular customers. This duality of empowerment and objectification creates a complex work environment. As one barista reflected, I think that girls can show off their individuality through their personality or through the clothes that they wear. It's a sentiment that captures the nuanced nature of the job, a blend of self-expression and customer service that defies simple categorization. Perhaps one of the most surprising aspects of the bikini barista scene is the sense of camaraderie that develops among the workers. Faced with challenging situations, they often band together, supporting each other and standing up to inappropriate behavior. If it's really inappropriate, we'll say something to the customer like, hey, you know that's kind of over the line, one barista explained. This solidarity extends beyond just dealing with problematic customers. Many baristas describe a supportive work environment where they could be themselves and form genuine friendships. It's a stark contrast to the often solitary nature of traditional barista work, adding an unexpected layer of community to the job. The reality of being a bikini barista is far more nuanced than most people realize. It's a job that offers financial opportunities and a chance for self-expression, but also comes with significant risks and challenges. For many of these women, it's not just about serving coffee and revealing attire. It's about navigating a complex industry that sits at the intersection of service, sexuality, and entrepreneurship. While bikini baristas navigate their complex world, traditional coffee shops face an unexpected challenge. How do you compete when the shop down the street offers more than just a caffeine fix? The answer has sparked a citywide debate that goes far beyond coffee. The impact of bikini barista stands on Seattle's coffee industry has been nothing short of transformative. Traditional coffee shops have reported significant declines in business, with some owners admitting they simply can't compete against the allure of bikini-clad baristas. It's a stark reminder of how quickly consumer preferences can shift, even in a city known for its coffee culture.
But the Bikini Barista phenomenon isn't just about revealing outfits. These businesses have developed sophisticated marketing strategies that go beyond the initial shock value. Themed promotional days and unique customer experiences have significantly increased customer engagement and sales. It's a business model that combines the familiar comfort of coffee with the excitement of something new and daring. The success of this approach hasn't gone unnoticed. What started as a Seattle-specific trend has now expanded beyond the city limits. Similar establishments have opened in various states, indicating a broader cultural acceptance of this business model. It's a development that raises questions about changing societal norms and the intersection of sexuality and commerce. However, this expansion hasn't come without controversy. Critics argue that bikini barista stands contribute to the objectification of women and create a workplace culture that tolerates sexual harassment. It's a critique that goes to the heart of ongoing debates about gender roles and workplace safety in America. These stands have become lightning rods for discussions about sexuality and business culture. They reflect and challenge societal attitudes toward gender roles and exploitation, forcing communities to confront uncomfortable questions about where to draw the line between empowerment and objectification. Interestingly, many bikini barista stands are pushing back against these criticisms by emphasizing quality and service. At Caudrel's Espresso, for example, Baristas focus on providing top-notch coffee and customer service, aiming to create a positive experience that goes beyond their revealing attire. It's an attempt to prove that these businesses can offer substance along with style. This espresso trend has sparked broader discussions about the role of sexuality in business. Some see it as a natural evolution of marketing strategies, while others view it as a concerning step towards the further commodification of attraction. Either way, it's clear that these stands have tapped into a complex set of cultural desires and anxieties. As the debate rages on, the bikini barista phenomenon continues to challenge our perceptions of what's acceptable in the service industry. It's forcing us to reconsider long-held assumptions about professionalism, customer service, and the limits of self-expression in the workplace. As Seattle's provocative coffee culture pushes the boundaries of acceptability, a new question emerges. Is the Sexpresso scene brewing its own demise? The very freedom that fueled its rise may now be forcing an unexpected transformation. The bikini barista industry, once a symbol of Seattle's rebellious spirit, now faces calls for reform from within its own ranks. Former baristas like Brittany are advocating for realistic changes to protect young women in the industry. The focus needs to be on creating an environment that is safe she states, highlighting the growing concern for workplace safety and dignity. These calls for reform aren't just about changing attire. They're about reshaping the entire culture of the industry. Proposals include establishing universal standards for addressing sexual harassment, providing comprehensive training for new hires, and displaying signs that promote zero tolerance for harassment. It's a shift that could fundamentally alter the Sexpresso experience. But why now? The push for change comes as the industry grapples with serious safety concerns. Many baristas open stands alone in the early morning hours, increasing their vulnerability to potential threats. This situation has sparked a broader conversation about workplace safety in unconventional job settings. Legal challenges are also mounting, adding another layer of complexity to the industry's future. Courts have ruled against ordinances that primarily target women's dress codes indicating a potential for ongoing legal battles. These rulings raise questions about gender equality and the limits of workplace regulations. The Sexpresso phenomenon has always been a lightning rod for discussions about gender roles and workplace norms. Now it's at the center of a debate that could reshape our understanding of empowerment and objectification in the workplace. As one barista put it, just because somebody's in a bikini, you can't be disrespectful. This sentiment captures the industry's struggle to balance its unique appeal with the need for respect and safety. So, what might the future hold for Seattle's bikini barista stands? It's possible we'll see a more regulated and respectful environment emerge. Stands might implement stricter policies on customer behavior, provide more comprehensive support for their employees, and focus on creating a safer work environment without losing their distinctive character. But the implications of this potential shift extend far beyond Seattle's coffee scene. 
The evolution of the Sexpresso industry could serve as a case study for other businesses that straddle the line between empowerment and exploitation. It raises questions about how we value workers in service industries and what constitutes acceptable workplace behavior in an era of changing social norms. Imagine walking up to your favorite bikini barista stand in the future. Instead of the familiar sight of scantily clad baristas, you might be greeted by workers in more modest attire, but with an increased emphasis on coffee quality and customer service. It's a scenario that seemed unlikely just a few years ago, but now feels increasingly possible. This potential transformation also reflects broader societal changes. As conversations about consent, respect, and gender equality continue to evolve, industries that have traditionally relied on sex appeal may need to adapt. The Bikini Barista Stands of Seattle could be at the forefront of this shift, pioneering new ways to balance attraction and respect in the workplace. As we've explored Seattle's Sexpresso scene, we've uncovered a complex world where empowerment and objectification intertwine. It's a place where economic opportunity meets societal debate challenging our perceptions of work, gender, and sexuality. Think about your own reaction to this phenomenon. Does it make you uncomfortable, or do you see it as a form of empowerment? One barista noted, I think that girls can show off their individuality through their personality or through the clothes that they wear. This perspective highlights the nuanced nature of the industry. The bikini barista trend forces us to confront difficult questions about gender roles, workplace norms, and the commodification of attraction. As society evolves, so too might this controversial coffee culture. What does a reaction to this phenomenon say about you? Now that we've explored this unique Seattle scene, why not dive into another intriguing cultural phenomenon? Check out our recent video on why Honduran women are captivating foreigners in 2024 for more thought-provoking content.